people where I'm going, what's funny where you are? And it's often a dialect based joke or it's a joke based on a peculiarity of who they're proud of. Um, it's some of the things that's sort of central to my idea of comedy is actually not a, you're different so you're stupid, but you're different because this thing that you do, you know, you realize is true about yourself. Right. And that sometimes it's dialect and sometimes it's just national character. But mm -hmm. they're not sort of stereotypes. They're very affectionate. Um, mm -hmm. Will is also happy uh, to have Judy into the session. Will, Will is also happy about that because in the previous session with Will, we, we were like discussing into all like national language Hindi and then we were talking about indigenous language Gujarati and Will was so confused that, oh my God, how much translation is needed here. And now Will is like, hey, Judy, hello. hello. <laughs> if these guys are speaking in the other language, we'll be accompanying each other. So yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I saw a little bit of that last session. Okay. Um, and it's so great to see so many women, female, Indian comics on this session. <laughs> I, where are they? What's, what's the situation uh, with um, women doing stand-up? So it's, it's, it's not, still not a great number. That's what I can uh, share. It's not still not a great number or an equal number, or we are not even near equal in the number of like man versus woman in comedy. Mm -hmm. But uh, on a positive side, on a, on a happier note, I can say that it's increasing. So it's it's basically it getting better. So that's what, what I'm think happy stopping? about. What what do you think are the barriers to that? Um, it uh, so it, if, if we talk about. Yeah, what, if we talk about the rural part of India, there are several barriers like uh, the restrictions from the family, then there are certain mindsets. And, but in the metro uh, part or, or overall into, into the entire country, the, the, the thing which is like, it's all about the mindset. That's what I think. Yes, but India has had, unlike the US where right. they don't seem to want to vote in a, a female president, um, India has had its share of very strong female leaders. Right. Right. So, right. Right. Of course. Of course. And 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 uh, like one of the female comedians, very well-known female comedians from India, says like, you know, till till uh, till there is like uh, an introduction of a female comedian in the country. Like, uh, so please welcome the next female comedian. When you are introducing her as a female <laughs> comedian, it's not going to be much better, you know. Uh -huh. When you are introducing okay. her as a specific like the word female, then then that's the problem of the mindset, I guess. We should, we should start talking about that. Yeah, but like one good thing about it, it is like literal, like that, that literal problem everybody's addressing on the stage itself. Like literally when, uh, like I used to see uh, like uh, women comics coming and they would be literally saying that, okay, at my house, my parents must be thinking this. They must be yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. that what am I doing in this bar. So like literally addressing crazy. like every issue like that. So that was something very interesting because like in the foreign comics, you that isn't that much popular. But here literally problems like ki, my parents aren't allowing. Yeah, like, I'm a 30 year old person, but my parent isn't allowing or my husband isn't allowing. So that was a very new kind of an issue with, which came about uh, when it come, came to like Indian female comics. Yeah. Well, the, you know, if any of you... Um, can do um, your, your act in English, there is a huge market in the U.S. for Indian comics. <coughs> and my, my friend, uh, one of my students, Dan Ninen, um, so he's half Indian and half Japanese. He's, he's born in the U.S. Right. And I got to tell you people, um, they are so hungry in the U.S., these Indian companies, especially high-tech companies, they fly him out, and he's not famous. They fly him out, private jets, $15,000 to come do a 40-minute set at their meeting in, in, in Silicon Valley. You right. understand Silicon Valley um, mm. in San yeah. Jose, up in California? They fly him to India. He performs for 1,500 people, and... He's been doing the same act for a very long time, but incredibly successful because there's not um, in the U.S. Um, Indian, um, you know, we've been the, the comics have been making fun of, you know, Indians working 7-Eleven, the accent. And so with our new consciousness, you can't do that anymore. Um, and 
there is, like if any of you get together 60 minutes of really good material that would about just being Indian. And, um, and, and he does stories that are universal, such as, you know, dealing with your, your, your mother and your father and all this kind of stuff that is, you know, about families is so universal. I just want to tell you um, that in the States, there is one, once the COVID, we get past the COVID, um, and, and we open up again. I am telling you, <laughs> you could make a lot of money. It's very popular right now, and there's not that much competition. So that's something to think about. Um, certainly, it just most comics in the U.S. make the bulk of their money not by doing Netflix comedy specials, but by these corporate events where they just pay a fortune. And Dan has his, we should, you know, uh, I mean, we should get Dan on here to talk mm -hmm. about the kind of places he's performed in India as well in the US. Cause um, I think he's very grateful and would be willing to share some of his uh, success with you and uh, to, show, to show you opportunities um, past so, comedy clubs. Right. So Judy, what, what do you find as a reason to this? Like you say that Dan got a, got a big show up for a like, big amount for a, for a 40 minute show in the Silicon Valley, or you also say that here the people or the companies are very hungry about hearing Indian comedians. And even if I say my personal experience, I've been to US for like a one month trip um, uh, last year and um, I did a couple of shows. Uh, most of the shows were into the regional language and for the regional people out there. But I did a couple of like one or two small sets or small shows for the for the international crowd or for the for the states crowd as well. But what do you find as a main reason that they are really looking forward to the Indian comedians or the comedians from the Asian ah. side? It's very important for comics to find their lane um, because that means um, it's all about niche marketing right now. So for instance, one of my students in my, who came out of my workshop when I was teaching was Maz Jobrani. Uh, I don't know if you know Maz, do you know, have you heard of Maz Jobrani? Um, he is an Iranian American and he wanted to talk about when he was in my class and about politics, and I don't know, you know, what he wanted to talk about. But I said, hey, you know, talk about um, discrimination against people from Iran. Right. And his career blew up. He's one of the most highly paid, successful comics. He went on something called the Axel of Evil Tour. And right. he has, um, he performed what at one of the most prestigious places for 2,500 people at the Kennedy Center. Who was in the audience? Iranians, American Iranians, or expat, you know, uh, uh, pe people of his descent. So, for instance, right, right now, there, there are so many comics. But right. if you have what I call a, uh, a lane to identify yeah. your audience, people here are so hungry. I mean... My uh, son-in-law is uh, Indian, um, born in, in Kenya, but his parents are Indian. And, right. you know, the over-domineering mother, <laughs> right? And the, mm -hmm. and the uh, always disapproving father is something that we all relate to. But when it's, when it's done for an Indian audience, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it really fulfills their heart. And like, for instance, I'm Jewish and there's nothing, I, I mean, I go, I love to see somebody who has my culture, I'm not religious, but someone who has my culture. Right. There's something that we can all relate to about that and not only relate to it, but there's a, we will pay for it. So right. if you want to, and I think this, what, I, what I'm trying to teach people now is to think about who your audience is while you're developing material. So you could, I'm all about 
uh, getting paid. I don't, I haven't done comedy clubs for maybe 20 years because right. I do cor corporate mar uh, 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 corporate because they're desperate for humor. Sure. And I like, I like, I'm a fan of getting paid. So, uh -huh. uh, I mean, I give a lot away for free, like, like this webinar, which I'm happy to help nurture mm -hmm. comics. But, but I just think that when you, like, for instance, I'll give you one of my most successful students is Hannah Gatsby. I was doing a workshop in Australia and she wasn't, she didn't want to talk about being gay. And um, I, I said, I mean, <laughs> I don't care. You look so, I mean, she's very gay looking. She looks very mannish. Well, I said, embrace it, talk about it. And Hannah Gatsby um, uh, did uh, her Netflix special. It right. won an Emmy. She's doing her second Netflix special because she had the courage to sure. really be who she is. And not only did gay people uh, react, but um, the world reacted because when you are truly yourself and you're doing comedy from your heart, you know, with with um, something in mind. So so then you might go, well, you know what? That joke, I'm not. That joke I I, I wrote for myself about politics. Right, and it's more about like personal experience or the thing you want to say, other than making them laugh. Okay, so here I would like to tell all the speakers that we are live on YouTube and we can start the session um, straight away, right now. Uh, oh, I thought we started. Yeah, we, we are just gone live. Uh, oh no, I'm just gone. Just a minute. Back, you were so. born ready, Judy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so so uh, um, I'll sad. be introducing. I'll be, no, no, it's not at all sad. So I'll be I'll be introducing um, all the uh, speakers, all the eminent speakers here. Uh, we have Judy Kajavizat uh, from all the way from Los Angeles. Judy is uh, a stand-up comedy trainer and uh, author of uh, stand-up comedy, the book Comedy Bible, which are the two most popular comedy books. Um, on, wait, on wait, wait, the new comedy Bible. A new comedy Bible, of course. The, <laughs> the second edition, the new edition is also- No, it's not a second great. edition. It's not second. It's completely it's rewritten. Oh, wow. Then, then, then that's, it's, that's and, a and must a workbook. read and a right now read, I guess. Yeah, and you can download it from my, 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 my site and it has a workbook where you amazing. just start writing it. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. So yeah, we have Judy with us. Um, uh, we have Will Wegler, Dr. Will Wegler with us. Um, Dr. Wegler is a uh, uh, um, theater practitioner who is working on the theories of joke and theories of how, how comedy performs or how, how one performs comedy into uh, the different uh, uh, visual and physical ways. So yeah, his, Dr. Wegler is doing a research about the subject alchemy of astonishment, which is related to the theories around humor and storytelling. So um, both me and Dr. Wegler would like to introduce him uh, more as a joke teller and a storyteller. That, that's what uh, really uh, justifies the, the, the way of performances he do. We have Mr. Gunjan Joshi. Uh, Gunjan sir is a very well-known comedy writer and uh, uh, a writer who performs, who, a writer who writes uh, like um, a very experimental ways of uh, uh, a very experimental uh, pieces of comedy and he's also like one of the finest writers Indian comedy industry in television have So that's that's mr. Gunjan with us. Uh, we have uh, Kamlesh Darji with us KD. We can call him KD. So and he, he pronounced his name is KD live So he's always live, you know, like always live and happening. So so KD uh, is a stand-up comedian and he, he, he performs stand-up comedy, improv comedy and sketch comedy and he's also experimented a couple of more comedy honors. And then we have uh, Aryan Kadri with us. Aryan is uh, a stand-up comedian and improviser and he is also a comedy enthusiast um, um, with whom I, I always have discussions about, you know, uh, the couple of theories and couple of uh, uh, things which are getting worked and not working in, into comedy. So he's basically a comedy enthusiast uh, who is exploring the art form uh, in, in every possible mean. Uh, so, and myself, Amit Kuwa. Uh, of course, both the viewers and you all are in, like all know me. That's why we all are here. But thank you so much for joining in. So the first question that I would like to ask uh, um, to all the panelists and anyone of you can voluntarily answer. And the, the question is, um, 
actually, I would like to hear the answer from all of you. And, and the question is, uh, which is the title of the session? Can comedy be learned? Now, of course, this session have uh, two comedy trainers, me and Judy. So this is a very basic question that, of course, uh, comedy can be learned. That's why Judy and I have an academy. And, and, and that's why like, uh, it, it all happened. And also, like, it's, it's the basic question. But still, there's a, there's a thing, myth, or uh, the belief into some of the people that you cannot learn comedy. It's something which you, which you have or have not. So what's your thought about it? We'll, we'll start with uh, uh, Aryan, I guess. Aryan, what do you think? Can comedy be learned? Yeah, yeah. As in, uh, in a sense, uh, there is like uh, through schools of thoughts, and the two different ways of framing it is that can comedy be learned and can comedy be taught. So, like when it when it comes to a training school, so that the question. Like, of course, I believe that a co comedy can absolutely be learned, given that it's a very acquire it's a very acquiring trade that. Like we go on the stage, or else we uh, like maybe read some comedy literature. We see comedy and we learn. So, of course, we can learn through it. But when we move towards the next question, that can it be taught? So that's where our uh, different side comes in. That like maybe when it comes to being taught, some mechanisms through which we can attain comedy can be taught. But it is something very much similar to creativity. That gradually we we can learn creativity and we can gradually become a creative person. But like we cannot say ki, like you cannot literally tell a person that you become a creative or maybe, maybe a few mechanisms here and there can be taught, but not the absolute art the can art be taught form. in that context. So right. that's what I believe that right. when, when it comes to teaching. So, yeah. Right. Uh, so obviously Judy um, has a very, very specific answer for that. We'll come to Judy at the, at the, uh, after all, uh, all the panelists. So uh, Bill, I would like to ask you, What's your thought about comedy and training? Can it be learned? Can it be taught? What's your views on it? Absolutely. Okay. Um, I mean, it, you, can, you can hop on a bicycle and make it go forward. But if you actually know that there's a trick called gear shifts, you, it'll, it's a whole lot easier. You can get right up hills. You know, you can go faster. Those are the kinds of things. If you can know what the gears are. What the, so there's actually... I mean, I just made a list in anticipation of three different terms that are associated with concepts. And if you know what the term is, the concept, you can adjust your impulse mm. to make it land better, to make it be received better. And right. so... So, Will, your microphone has just got muted. Oh, How about yeah. that? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. So... Yeah, and so as we go along, you know, I'd love to share a couple of them just to give you an example. But uh, I'm all about, in all my work as a theorist for theater, for, for joke theory, I'm all about finding the word that opens it up. When you say as a performer, oh, that's a thing, you can dial right into it and make it work for you. So that makes it teachable. True. Yeah. True. Um, Gunjan, what do you think about this about this? Humor comedy. So I'll be uh, if if we are talking into the other language, I'll be translating it. I or Aryan can help me out. No, here. no. Uh, I will try in English. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Last yeah. time, uh, last time it's Shukriya. Uh, and Shukriya. Hindi now Will is talking in Hindi. Like Shukriya. <laughs> Shukriya. I will start in Hindi. <laughs> okay. So uh, why not? And uh, why not? And what you can't learn, you can learn. Everything in Hindi, there is a uh, you can say poem. We say it Doha. The Karat Karat Abhyas ke Jalamati hot Sujan Rasri Awa Jati Silper hot Nishan. And if you practice, if you practice, if one practice, then one stone head can change himself into the wise, per wise mm. person. Okay. So if you practice, you can learn comedy. And that's just at atmosphere. Okay, you don't know how to walk, you learn it. You don't know how to talk, you learn it. You don't know how to stand, you learn it. If you don't know how to how to do comedy, you can learn it. It's very simple. Right. It's like being engineer, being doctor, being comedian. Right, right. But do you want it? 
Do you really want it? If you want it, then only you can learn it. Yeah, that's 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 the first yeah. thing. The will to learn it. Of course. Right, right. I think yes. Comedy right. can be learned, and and of course, uh, if we talk about teaching, teach comedy. Yes, if something can be learned, it can be it can taught. Be taught as well. It can be taught as well. Right, right. So I think both sides. It's it's a yes, from yes, from both sides. From both sides. Uh, Kamlesh Bhai, what's your thought about it? Uh, yeah, as Gunjit sir said, yes, if it can be taught, it can be learned. So mm -hmm. comedy can be learned, and we should learn because uh, you know so many times. Uh, like if I take my example, uh, I I was very funny since childhood, but I later on I came to know that okay, this can be a profession. If okay. I have some, uh, if somebody can train me, I can be a good stand-up comedian. Like I approach you, I've seen some advertisement. I approach you, taught me. Okay, this is the process you have to pass, or this is the process of stand-up comedy. Like uh, this is not like they, I tell one joke and people are laughing. Okay, okay. One, but now if I want to make a career, I have to make a set. I have to perform in open mics. You know, I have to evaluate myself also how to appear on the stage, how to make a script. Because previously I was not knowing how to make a script. I just heard a joke. Okay, this is a good joke. Take it. But it's it, it not like that. We have to create our own style. So from my side, yeah, it's it it, it should be learned. Right. That is kind of comedy, and you have to learn it. Right, right, right. So Judy. Um, the answer is very straight and clear, but still would like to ask you if you can put it in a different way or not, in any other way that we can think um, of. Yes, I would say yes of course. and no. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Two things. Um, Stand-up comedy um, can be taught just like jazz can be taught. Every right. single person on Saturday Night Live has come out of improv training. So here's improv where they're just being funny off the top of their head and yet there's so many rules to it. So um, most people who are very successful like Chris Rock, uh, Chris Rock, do you know who he is? He's an American, African-American comic who took time off the road because he wasn't getting to the headliner place. He was in the middler. So he went and he studied all the great comics to see what are they doing and he discerned the structure in my yeah. books i i did not make up um this structure this is the structure that his um, um of stand-up has a very specific setup and payoff most funny people i know are funny so they know how to be funny and they do the payoff but they don't know how to set up a joke which is one of right. the most important things to do so 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 they disconnect from the audience so they're just being funny they're being funny but they're not connecting to the audience by setting up the joke and including them in there's various ways to do that i can teach all of that i can teach by starting your joke using rather than using i me my to start your joke you us you know how anybody else have a mother who you know they're they're fighting with rather than a story about yourself which becomes the energy is flowing the wrong way i can teach all of those things but here's something that cannot be taught i could take a person who has no sense of humor and get them funny for right. 5 minutes max after that let's not kid ourselves you have to have talent to get paid to do comedy you have to have talent and that talent is something that cannot be taught however i have seen a lot of people who have talent and are still working as waiters and waitresses because they've never learned the fundaments of putting a joke together i've seen sure. really talented people get like one special really succeed but they go, okay, come on, we need, we need another 60 minutes of new material from you. And they have not a clue how to write that. That's when they come to me. So right. eventually, everybody comes to get help. Right. And comedy is something that 
you know, maybe we perform it all by ourselves, but we create it in a relationship with either an, uh, um, a comedy buddy um, where we can help each other and guide each other or an instructor or, you know, as long as a good instructor. Right, right, right. So you cannot, you can teach somebody the fundamentals of stand-up to be a better stand-up comic or right. a better storyteller, but you cannot teach someone how to be talented. Right. So it's, it's like to simplify in a one sentence, you can make people learn comedy, but you cannot, like you cannot uh, make them learn sense of humor. Sense of humor is something which a person should have, which is, yeah. which is cannot, which cannot be taught. No, right. it can't. We've it can, all paid, we We've all seen that at comedy clubs, you know, yes. somebody gets on stage and their jokes are perfect, but it's like, oh my God, I want to poke my eyes out with a pencil. Oh, you know, it's. Yeah, of course, of course. So, so the other question that, that comes in my mind, which I would like to put in the panel, I think one of you can answer. And the question is, uh, um, there are two ways to learn comedy, uh, according to me. And this is completely my personal opinion. You guys can um, give your perspectives or point of views about it. Uh, one is a trial and error kind of format where when, where a single person is trying to learn comedy, he's, he's, he's creating a couple of jokes, he's performing into a club open mic or a cafe open mic. Um, he's coming home, he's trying to understand what is working and what is not working. He's trying to rework on the joke. He's again doing a joke uh, in another open mic. And then by trial and error, he's understanding the art of comedy and he's learning a stand-up comedy. And the other way is uh, the training workshop from a comedy trainer or a comedy training academy where you are actually learning techniques, uh, the craft of the uh, art form before getting on stage even on the first time. So... What's your views about both the ways of learning comedy, trial and error and learning from a workshop? Do you think both the ways are right? Do you think one of the ways is way better than the other one? What's your views? So, so when did you get up, if, if I want to ask you, uh, yeah, uh, you think, writing or uh, performing, but yeah, I know. I, I got it. I got right. it. So, I, I think uh, somewhere it's, it's a mix and match of both okay. technology. What you're saying. Okay. So you make a base by learning, 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 learning. Okay. Then you, when you learn everything, not everything, but for a certain level, then you move with trial and error method. Okay? Right. You all are performer. You are still searching. Nobody knows that on which joke, audience will laugh. Right. 100% you, 100% no one is sure that audience right. will laugh on the joke. That's not sure. Okay? So, we have technique till one level till a certain level, then we are doing trial and error technique. Okay. And that makes a make that, that doesn't make us perfect, but leads us to be a perfect comedian or on the road of perfection. Because if we perfect, then we'll die. Okay. <laughs> so I think it's the mix and match of both. It's a mix and match of both. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What's your thoughts about this, Judy? Like the trial and error format uh, and the, the training format. I agree with uh, Gunhan. I, I, I find your approach very, um, to comedy, very interesting and spiritual. Um, I'm like, there's been comics who bomb mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. time. All the time. I, years and years ago, Andy Kaufman was one of those comics. Um, and I knew him well, I, I, I dated Andy, whatever. So what struck me about some comics, Larry David was the same way. Larry David, I don't know if you know, um, Curb Your Enthusiasm. He would get up in front of people and bomb. He, he kind of did it on purpose, but he ended up to be one of the most successful comedy voices right. in the history of comedy. So here's the thing. 
comedy is expression of your soul, of your heart. And sometimes the audience doesn't get you. Maybe the audience isn't ready to get you. Like, for instance, if we had a woman who had some really good jokes, but she was really domineering and strong, and it turned off the men in the audience, let's just say, should she stop doing her vision? So ultimately, in the end, I think you've got to look in yourself and go, does this material... Is, does it mean something to me? Does right. this material resonate with me? Did I write the joke well? And is it, how important is it to say, and I'm going to say it, like one of my students, Hannah Gatsby, who was talking about, I mean, she does really esoteric stuff about Picasso because she was an art history ma um, major and about uh, being... Um, they're uh, gay and people didn't like it but she kept doing it because she believed in it so that's how we learn is by getting into ourselves and having a teacher that you trust to go okay that you just haven't found the right audience yet right, but if you right. are passionate and you believe in that by all means keep doing it right Right. So, so the other question I would like to ask or the other point that I want to make here is like um, a lot of people who are like uh, the big names into the industry and learned comedy or learned humor from the trial and error format and who are certainly using the comedy techniques unintentionally, but they don't call it a technique and they call it, you know, the flow, yeah, flow man, right? that's what they plan. So my question here is, the point I want to make here is, um, does getting into a particular technique to make people laugh or to create a joke, makes it mechanical? If you are getting yeah. more into the techniques, and if you are like, you know, just let me just put this like rule of three, I need a third joke, I need anyhow, you know, the technique of callback, I need to call this back, I need to have this joke again, you know, have this callback again after three <laughs> jokes. If you're getting more into techniques, does it make it mechanical or a good trainer or a good teacher can help you out with how to use techniques and how much to use techniques? I, I want to I say something about that. Uh, do you guys know who Robin Williams was? Of course. Yeah. Do you course know who know. Robin Williams was? Robin mm -hmm. and I did an HBO comedy special together. Uh -huh. Robin, people would say, Robin... Well, I, you know, would take my class and go, I just want to be like Robin and just talk off the top of my head. Really funny. Well, when we did this HBO special, we did a rehearsal. And Robin said, okay, I'm going to stand here and do this. And I'm going to go in the audience. And over here, I'm going to do this Shakespeare thing. And then I'm going to walk over here because the director had to know what he was doing when. So... Right. Robin's, what people don't realize, the genius of Robin Williams was that his jokes were perfect. They were jokes, really short setups. Then he did what I call an act out, okay? Set up, act out. And then he'd have times he would riff. Do you know what the term riffing means? Riffing is improvising, making it up. But the joke itself was uh, structured a list of three, or, I mean, I have all these examples from Robin. If you look at his material, perfect. The genius of a really good stand-up comic is making scripted material appear as if you're making it up off the top of your head. Right. And that was the genius of Robin <coughs> Williams because you maybe set your joke up by talking to someone in the audience. So right. I'm talking to someone, hey, how long have you been married, sir? Oh, five years. All right. And now I'm going to go into my marriage stuff, but I improvise with him a little bit about being married and whatever. So it appears. So it, it, it makes it look like real. So he's using the techniques. Yes. Yeah, he's using the techniques, but he's using in a very right way and a very precise way that it doesn't look mechanical. You, 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 you have your act set up. Mm -hmm. 
And then you find places where you, you do what we call crowd work, where you work with the audience and you improvise. Or at the end of the joke, you already got the laugh. Now you're going to see if there's more laughs there and you're going to go, yeah, that's hard. Ah, it's like go on a rant and right. then come back to your material. Right, right, right. What, what's I, about, I'd say it's... Yeah, I was about to ask you, but yes, 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 please, we'll continue. I, I mean, it's like being a writer. If you have a huge vocabulary, then you can pick from the stuff that you know, the one that's going to really work. And that's what makes someone who just seems like such a great speaker. It, it's not that they've written it all down. It's that they have a whole buffet to pick from. And that's true with jokes, too. I saw, um, actually, in India, I saw a uh, busker. Um, no, I'm sorry. This was in Canada. Yeah, it's, it's in, um, uh, an English-speaking busker. Uh, he was doing a fire act in the middle of a plaza and all. And he set one of his torches down and went to get something else. And some street fella came over all kind of with the beard and the thing. And he reached down and he lit his cigarette on one of the guy's torches. And the guy turned around and he said, Dad, I thought I told you to stay in the car. And it was hilarious uh, that he turned this thing around. And I realized, you know, it looks like he just made that up, but I'm just sure he's used that line over and over again. It yeah. would only come up in that circumstance when the meaning, when the right was, but he could pull from, you know, dozens of options at any moment and plug in. So certainly that's part of it is, is, is knowing enough right. that you right. are versatile enough to pull from. Right. But I also wanted to chime in on the other thing about the learned. I just missed that sort of chance to come into that. Um, when I go to see sh theater performances or really anything at all, I bring my little notepad with me, uh, stand up the same, and I'm jotting things down all the way through. I'm not jotting down what the good joke was so that I could steal it, you know, or, or the scene. I'm, I'm noticing that when the audience really roars or gasps, figuring out what it was that they did that made that work. And the same thing, when I see something that really could have been brilliant and it flops, right. I make a right. note to say, what would I have done differently right. to, to be able to make that thing land? And so that's the kind of training that is not in a workshop. You've kind of learned some vocabulary and you've learned some ways of thinking, but then you're assessing other people's work, not for the material, but for the way it's delivered and right. what they're doing that's working and why it's working. And right. that then you can put into your arsenal, uh, your quiver for, for, for all the right. stuff that you can bring. Very true, very true. So as, as Dr. Wegler said, and as I was asking into the previous question, I would like to add a follow-up question to uh, the question that I've asked is about, about the like trial and error format of comedy learning and the workshop format of comedy learning. Is it also, of course it is like that, but I'm asking for a perspective or a point of view of all of you that um, it's also time saving to learn techniques. Because if you are like, if, if you are not learning it very, very, very in a very training format, then you are trying to understand. Okay, that that's working. You know the why, the question why, as as Doctor Will said, so the question why if the joke is working, and if you're asking yourself why is it working, and if you find out an answer that okay, this is the element which is making it working, which is making the joke work, and then you try to understand that, and and if you have, and the other option that if you have learned it through a workshop, uh, that okay, this is how it's happening. Is, so the question is, is comedy workshops or is learning comedy helps us to save time in developing a comedy journey for an individual? What's, what's I think, Kamlesh Bhai? Or, or Aryan would like to say, yeah, sure. Yeah, Kamlesh Bhai, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yes, Amit Bhai, it's true actually that uh, we can save the time if you have learned the technique, obviously. Right. Because, uh, you know, if we don't know about the techniques, then we may use it on the wrong way, maybe sometime. Maybe we, we uh, misinterpret some technique on different way. We are trying uh, learning something here and uh, we are trying something different there. So we have to learn this in the proper uh, manner. Then we try it, then we make a set and then we rehearse in the open mic. And But yeah, for saving the time, we have to learn it. We should right. not experiment directly on the stage. True, true, true. Mr. Kadri wanted to add something. Yes, Aaron. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, as Rivel put, 
like see uh, for me like learning is not just workshops but it's also like literally just seeing comedy happen right in front of you so that Because, that's what my so, sorry to interrupt that's what my point was so yeah. you can answer it very like uh, the truth the, the question was we uh, the point was like there are two ways of learning of course you understand it through watching and through experimenting and they are understanding mm-hmm. okay this is called like okay this is the rule of three you are understanding it through doing it or watching it and the other way mm-hmm. you are you are like straight away learning it like is it more time saving than the other one yeah so like i i remember what happened was that uh, i think a year back uh, i met this comic and he was a guy who had like never seen like he doesn't know what netflix is or he has never seen even like probably stand up on youtube also right. but uh, but when I, when i saw him doing comedy i saw him using a callback somewhere and i i just asked him that like uh, how did you came up with this and he's just like that i just happened to do this right like, it and it uh, worked yeah and but that was that wasn't something that he used to like like uh, let's say that there is there are like a specific comedians who always end their specials with a callback or something like that but right. he wasn't a guy who he would do that then when i told him that okay this thing is called a callback or else there is someone who who saying the same alphabet twice and uh, i when we tell them that it's an alliteration or something like that so when they understand that it's a technique so they realize that like what they are because at the end they know what they are like they are doing it right but right. when you know what you are doing it right that's where you you can use your your own techniques of which you have only inherently acquired in other places like in other formats too so like the same techniques can maybe be used in sketch writing like i remember that when i learned about like let's say callbacks in stand up now i even use them in improv so similar to that like if i would have never have known then probably i wouldn't have used it as simple as true. that so true. yeah gunjan sir what's your thoughts about this सीखने से समय बचता है। बिल्कुल। ऑफ़ परफॉर्मेंस। फर्स्ट लेवल, यू 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 गॉट द द द परफॉर्मर हैव टू मेक इट योर ओन। एंड सेकंड लेवल दैट यू हैव टू मेक योर स्क्रिप्ट इनटू ऑडियंस it should be then audience script theek hai so audience point of view so script uh, one script when you make it yours that's the process which can be taught which can be learned theek hai so if you got that point that how can you understand your understanding of a script if you got the understanding of a script ki इसमें कहा क्या चीजें हैं कहा क्या है ये जो चीज अगर आपने सीख ली तो आपको यहाँ टाइम बचेगा उसके बाद right. जब आप तो परफॉर्म करेंगे इफ यू परफॉर्म दैट नाउ दैट्स नॉट द टाइम सेविंग दैट्स ऑलवेज ट्राई व्हाट आई सेल एंड टेरर एंड ऑल द थिंग्स आर गोइंग विद ऑल द एक्सपीरियंस यू नीड दैट बट दैट लर्निंग यू मेक स्क्रिप्ट योर दैट टाइम कैन कट एंड कट कैन कट वेरी इजिली आई थिंक ऑफकोर्स इट सेव द टाइम So, so uh, uh, before asking this question to Judy, I would like to add a very personal experience of mine. So, uh, for the first fifty stage shows that I've done in my life, when I was like around nine years old, kid. So, uh, so for the first fifty shows, I'm like, I'm not getting good microphones. I'm not getting good sounds. My voice is never clear to the audience. Like, what's happening? Is it is it like something with my voice? Is it like I'm not speaking the right way? What's happening? Why am I not rightly audible to people? so i was doing this for like 50 55 shows and i'm i was unsatisfied with my my voice uh, or or the volume reaching uh, to the audience and then one day into a, a a live show in front of like 300 people a singer who was accompanying with me with stage he was the next performer a singer just did this i was using the microphone like this and the singer came on stage and he just did this like you handle the microphone like that and suddenly it was a magic and i'm like wow i am superbly audible how is this happening and it's just like it's the right way of handling microphone so there are two things going on in my mind the first thing is why didn't anyone tell me like there were so many stage people around host producers microphone people whose work is to like guide us no one was telling me the right way and the other one if i get this a particular small information let's say 50 shows back 
then I might have saved a lot of time. But yeah, Judy, what's your point about it? Like, is learning comedy or learning techniques saving time? Um, yes and no. <laughs> oh, wow. um, I think it's very important to learn the structure of comedy. Um, but comedy is learned through having an examined life. So you can learn jokes, you could do knock-knock jokes, they could be perfect jokes, but who cares? I feel that um, comedy is, is, you could, I've had gigs where the mic went out, where um, so many things went wrong, where I just, you know, had a perfect script that worked the night before, but it's not working now. We've all had that experience of right. one night we kill, and the next night we bomb. It's the same material. So what's going on? I'll, t I'll tell you what's going on. Comedy is 20% technique and 80% authentic emotion. Right. Audiences don't respond to words. They respond <coughs> to, to emotion. Of Comedy is propelled by these four words. What's stupid? What's stupid? You know, what is stupid and, you know, this is so stupid. And if you, if you don't feel it's stupid, but you're saying it's stupid, there's going to be a disconnect. What's scary? You got to know what's scary. I just have them here because I did an online workshop. <laughs> you know what's hard? What's hard? And about your life, what is weird? So hard, weird, scary, stupid. And that emotion of the words must carry through the joke. And you could have the most perfectly written joke. Everything's working. You have my technique. You have everything working. But if you don't have emotion, um, if you're not talking about something that really makes you angry, you know, comedy is renegade. That means we're rebels. We want to change the world. And the way to change it is through comedy because people can hear it because it's funny. But right. the core of it has to be something that really shakes you up. True, true, true. That's so true. So, so uh, as we are going towards the conclusion of the session, we have last couple of like three, four minutes. So uh, before we conclude the session, I would like to uh, ask each one of you about uh, one or two sentences about uh, a, a, a comedian that you want to refer or a book that you want to refer. Of course, um, uh, we all, yeah, Judy is smiling like a shining star. Of course, of course, of course. Okay, a book uh, that you want to refer, which is not written by you. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, how's that? Judy, I'll refer to your book. <laughs> <laughs> and Judy is asking Will in a personal uh, message that, hey, can you tell me first. the names of your book so I would can do the same? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me put it that way. A book that is not written by you or the fellow <laughs> panelist. How is that? <laughs> Okay, okay. Or what else? Or what, what, what was the first part of the question again? <laughs> okay, so... What was so, it? Okay, let, let me put it um, in, a, in a framed question that a book, a performance um, that you want to refer oh. in terms of learning comedy, which ah, you think ah, is a must read or see, or you can take a couple of names as well, okay. uh, which the users or the, the viewers, uh, users of the application or the website or the viewers of the stream can go search about and you know as a conclusion or as a as a gist of the session that you want to refer to the viewers and to the fellow panelists as well of course so yeah we'll we'll start with you uh gunjan sir any books any performances that you would like to refer uh yeah those uh i think uh referring uh referring a book is not my cup of tea because uh, <laughs> uh I did not read too much about pitching comedy, but yes, in India, if you are in India, you should watch some good performances. Uh, one you should watch, Jaswal Bhatti for timing. Bilkul. 
uh, you should watch. Uh, there is a there is one actor called G two, who is in uh -huh. TVF. Okay. G two. G two who yeah, works in TVF, and he's also uh, he he was in Shumangal's Zada Saudhan. Of course. Of course. Mm. Yeah. I like the way he makes uh, script deliverable. The way he is, uh, the way he uh, deliver the script, that's amazing. Right. Uh, I think these are the things which you should watch. इसके अलावा बाकी नाम तो मैं आपको बता ही चुका हूँ पहले पिछले सेशन में. You should learn from Mahmood, Johnny Lever, Sanjeev Kumar Sahab. And uh, lots of person in movies. Right. I think, yeah. Of course. Um, Kedi by Kamlesh by. If you would like to refer some a book or a performance. Uh, actually, in my total life of comedy, I have read only one. That is from you. <laughs> that is a Judy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, that uh, that book I have learned. Uh, you know, I've gone through that book. so that's uh, and according to uh, you know performances gunjas has said that if we are in india then obviously johnny liver sanjeev kumar then we can say some uh, you know uh, i also seen started like uh, virdas and uh, you know when you want to reach a kind of genre then of course uh, some uh, comedy shows uh, right my popular is kapil sharma show Where I have learned so many things, you know, how to handle all these things, and uh, of course there are so many movies also. Right. And how many movies? I think I have seen when I'm surfing the channel nowadays in lockdown. Right. One movie is always there in the list. Hera Fairy and Fir Hera Fairy, which are two <laughs> Hindi uh, drama movies. Yeah, and have movie. like every scene is hilarious. Every character is hilarious. That is so detailed. And so raw and pure, like that that no one can uh, like uh, just stay idle while while sitting there. If you have to laugh, you should laugh. You shall laugh. That's that kind of the movies are this. If you can't write something or kind of don't something, मतलब you you can go with Charlie Chaplin kind of things and Mr. Bean, where you know without any dialogue. You of can. course, of course. Gunjan sir would like to add something. Yeah, Gunjan sir, please. please. Uh, I think I think uh, in India, lots of people ask about pocket book. <laughs> Do you have any <laughs> small pocket book? So I think there are two pocket books. One is uh, I think the first season of Sarabhai versus Sarabhai. Of course. Uh, the character, the delivery, the dialogues, and everything is mind blowing. So that's a pocket book. Every character is different chapter for you. ठीक है एंड आई थिंक वन मूवी आई फॉरगॉट टू नेम दैट्स पुष्पक या पुष्पक यू शुड वॉच कमल हसन यू डोंट नीड अ वर्ड टू शो अ होल स्क्रिप्ट दैट्स माइंड ब्लोइंग मूवी एंड विल एंड जूडी यू शुड वॉच अ मूवी नेम पुष्पक ओके आई एम राइटिंग इट डाउन राइट पी यू एस ए Pushpak. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll put it into uh, I'll put it into the chat for everyone so everyone can you. read it. Yeah, you you should watch it. That's amazing movie. Of course, inspired by uh, Charlie Chaplin, but mind blowing. Good. You will like. You will love it. Right. Of course. Uh, Arjun, would you like to recommend some names, some books, some performances? Yeah, I'll I'll make it as, uh, like in general I have a lot of recommendations, but like uh, given that I am this comedy buff, but uh, given that we have very less time, so I'll just make it short. Uh, one good thing uh, I'm not much of a book reader, but what I would say is that uh, see across different formats. Like uh, right. I I recently saw a Bo Burnham in comedy right. where he just made random songs, or uh, Demetri Martin who just made random drawings which would appear stupid but he the way he presented it was something very different so right. anything that doesn't make you feel ki doesn't make you feel that uh, how did i not come in, come up with it but instead makes you feel that damn i could never have come up with that so maybe that is something that you should target so maybe you come up with something which other people are like ki oh maybe this is something that is absolutely new like nobody has right. done before 
something like that and another, another thing one last advice i would give which it worked for me given that i am also very much uh, of a very body using comic i forgot the word but so uh, try watching com- comedians or performers uh, even in sketches or uh, movies or anywhere or or stand up improv anywhere in silent mode and in the silent you can literally observe literally every like, every expression and everything and it's, it's absolutely awesome so it's, it's 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 something like that that you hear it with the audio first and then you hear it again without the audio yeah yeah exactly that, then it makes sense i guess right absolutely okay. of course uh, i mean yes yes amit ji मैं पूछना चाहता हूँ we need to surf a lot we need to research a lot about a specific type that we are already doing jaise ki main agar main apni baat karu if i'm talking about myself if i'm performing on a if i'm i'm i'm, I'm preparing a stand up comedy set which is which is titled as pain which is the next solo uh, stand up set that i'm performing on it is titled as pain so i'm a very subject specific comedian so i i'll, I'll just go out on the internet and i'll be finding out the reference articles the performances about the specific topic so i'm i'm not suggesting or referring anything for comedy in general neither writing or or performing but the point i want to make is that if you are writing about something go ahead into the internet and find out what is exactly have been done into that that format of art form or that format of topic you know so that's what i am into if i'm using a comedy technique which is new to me i've just learned it through a so i i would like to watch a couple of references i would like to watch a couple like read a couple of articles about that before actually experimenting it into my performance so so topical or or on a particular point research it out that's what i prefer or suggest oh dr will what's your point of view here what what are the things not point of view but what are the things that you want to refer or names books well i've got a, a kind of an obscure one but it's okay. something that impacts so much of my comedy writing and my writing right. in general Right. Um one of my heroes is the great German theater uh, director Bertolt Brecht. Right. Oh. And he has an he has an essay on translation that's so interesting because he says bad translation doesn't take account of this. He says it's so important when you're translating into your language to start with the image of the thing and then move to the action. And the example he gives is kind of gruesome. It's from the New Testament. the line where they say if thine eye offend thee pluck it out ah right but he says that so much more poorly translated if you do the right around if you say pluck out the eye that offends thee it just kind of wimpy it, you need to see the thing in the in the mind's eye and then what happens right and i right. saw this played out um judy i don't know if you saw david burn on um uh, uh one of the talk shows He was talking about David Byrne the head of a, the Talking Heads was doing a Broadway show and he at the end of the show he played music he and the band played music and invited the audience to dance and he had this little joke at the end he invited me and he said the fire department has asked you about. not to dance in the aisles because right. dancers in the aisles will have an unfair <coughs> advantage if there's a fire in the theater and it was kind of funny but um Seinfeld came to the show <laughs> and Seinfeld said you got to switch around the funny bit is about having the unfair advantage you got to switch it around so <laughs> he switched it. he said the fire department has asked you not to dance in the aisles because in the event of a fire dancers in the aisles will have an unfair advantage you set up the image of the thing and then the action and i have found in my writing so often I look and I realize oh no no I got I got to start with the image and then the thing that's going to happen it allows right. the audience to picture it and then picture the thing and it's so much right. funnier then so right. <laughs> even though we were talking about translation I find that it works so well mechanically to repair a joke it's just not working it's because they're catching up with you rather than you giving them the thing and then the action so it's it's a simple little thing but i see it all the time and see when jokes land it's because that's happened and when they flop it's because they don't think they're going to right right 
That's now great. you don't need to read his essay on translation. I just uh, summarized. Yeah, yeah. That's right. just one. I mean, I've got, you know, these terms, um, parapostokian, the Greek term for um, the um, um, against expectation. Okay. Um, I, I do want to take just a minute because I've talked to you about this, Ahmed. I noticed Indian speech patterns. Yes. Good. All across who I talked to, people would do this kind of, and I've seen it here, a sort of a, a professor thing where they would begin a sentence and say, and so um, uh, um, we all remember our first prime minister, Nehru. And, you know, there'd be a pause like to, as if the... Yeah, yeah, I would like to add on this. You know, that's a, that's a specific, the specific teacher pattern that, 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 that Indian comedians have, which well noticed. Yes. Where we are asking them, that's the pattern that Willem noticed into every every Indian comedian. There's that pause, and and this um, there's a question Christokian means when you divert that. Right. Um, so um, Judy, you must know um, um, Wendy Liebman, who's not working so much anymore, but right. she was a Jewish comedian who did that all the time. Right. She, you know, talking about being on a plane and sitting next to this guy. She said, I could tell that he really wanted me to shut up because I kept talking and talking. And, you know, he just wanted to focus on flying the plane. And his, all of his attention was on that bottle of vodka. And so, you know, she, she put in these kinds of pauses that you're accustomed to hearing in Indian speech. But then by subverting it, it was hilarious. So it's a really culturally specific thing that would work, sure. you know, in your context. So those are the kinds of mechanical things that I think you can right. really take advantage of if you right. know how they're working. That's what right. study and practice does. Right, right. So, yeah, Judy, what, what, yeah. what, what do you refer I'm as a must-see or a must-read? Uh, Wendy is a friend of mine, and I'm going to send her a note that she's being talked about. Uh, I, I think what's, what you must see is I've just looked at Google, and it says the top number one an Indian comic is Kapel Shama, of according to Google, and uh, and um, I think you should look at who's really successful and what are they doing right, and <sighs> and 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 the other thing I you should you really need to um, focus on is to be relevant to this time, not not what's going on in your head in right your now. Head. Right. There's I a agree. nation we have COVID virus, the quarantine, people getting sick. Um, we have Black Lives Matter, which started in the US has become right. a worldwide phenomenon. Right. Uh, start expanding your life past your little body, your little relations, little thing. And if you can um, shed some humor on what we're all going through globally and what's on people's minds right now, not just your little life, I think right. that's, that's extremely important. And the comics that I pay to watch, that I will pay huge amounts of money to watch, are three comics. They are, well, number one, Wanda Sykes, especially her special called It's Not Normal, Chris Rock, and Eddie Izzard. And mm. the third name is? I, I didn't hear. Eddie Izzard. Right. Genius. Genius. Right. Absolute. British comic. And it's, may I say, as far as um, South Asian comics, uh, Canadian, um, um, Indo-Canadian woman, um, uh, Lily Singh, who you may know, who's now in Los Angeles and does such fantastic, oh gosh, so funny, and character stuff about where she plays her mother, she plays her father of in course. dialogue with her. Right, um, right. And just wonderful stuff. True, true that, true that. So yeah, let's let's conclude it here. Thank you so much, every one of you for joining in. Thank you so much, Judy, Will, Aryan, Gunjan, Sir, KY. Thank you for joining in.